Hey everyone, it's the Buns. Whatever your daily routine in Ragnarok Origin may look like, completing daily quests or daily commissions through the Eden Group is one of the fastest, most efficient ways to gain base and job experience to level up, as well as valuable items that will surely help you on your journey. In this video, we will take a closer look at the daily quest system by providing detailed descriptions of each of the commissions available to you, what sort of rewards are offered by each of the quests, and which of these dailies give you the most value for your time and effort. We'll also discuss the two less popular daily quests, Demon Treasure and Cat Paw Caravan, and explain why we think they are worth incorporating into your ROO daily routine. Finally, we'll briefly go through the rewards roulette and emblem collection for the weekly themed party event. So wipe off the pouring poop from your socketed plus 4 boots and let's get this show on the road! Daily commissions become available to you right after joining the Eden group toward the end of Chapter 1 of the main story quests, around player level 15. Initially, you'll only receive 20 commission tickets, granting access to the three easiest solo dailies in the game, Githenia Ruins, Dexterity Trial, and Arunafeld's Espionage. The number of commission tickets refill at 5am every day, so it's highly recommended you use up all your commission tickets before the end of the day to level up faster and gain more zennies, Eden coins, and other items. The number of commission tickets you receive increases with your level, from 20 to 40, then 60, and finally 80, which is the maximum per day. There are a total of 15 daily quests in ROO, and the availability of these quests randomly change every day, except for Hazy Forest, Anthem Trial, Demon Treasure, and Cat Paw Caravan, which are available every single day of the week. Let's start with the three solo dailies mentioned earlier. Gefenia Ruins, access through Koti in Gefen, is a simple, straightforward quest where you find yourself in the dark, maze-like Gefenia dungeon beneath the famous Gefen Tower. Your objective is to light five braziers as quickly as you can while trying to avoid the patrolling familiars. The flame on your torch gets extinguished after a few seconds, so it's advisable to move fast between braziers. If you're unlucky enough to have your flame extinguished before getting to light another brazier, just go back to a lit brazier to relight your torch. When it comes to avoiding familiars, I found it best to stick close to the walls and move fast, so as to avoid getting noticed. If a familiar sees you and starts attacking, simply lead it to a lit brazier and it'll immediately perish. Because Gifenya Rubens is such an easy daily, the speed at which you can complete it, and the very low number of commission tickets required, which is 10, we recommend this to be one of the first few dailies to do when starting a new character. Dexterity Trial is a silly minigame, access through Gendry and Morak, where you have to dodge projectiles being thrown at you by pesky monsters. It starts out nice and slow, with four goblins throwing their hammers at you. Then some yo-yos decide to join in, throwing some banana peels in the mix. The ultimate moment comes when spores spawn in to throw what appears to be acid spores, and don't forget the Marses hurling water at you. The bar on the lower right corner tells you how close you are to completion, while the hearts on the bottom center of the screen refer to your HP. Every time an item hits you, you lose half a heart, so be careful and stay alert. Personally, I was so bad at this back on NA that I don't remember ever completing this daily, but thankfully it seems easier on LNA and I managed to complete it on my first try and only lost a full heart in the process. Dexterity Trial costs 10 commission tickets. Arunafeld's Espionage is a stealth mission where you need to follow a woman by the name of Mara, who, according to Caesar Denied, is a spy from Arunafeld's. We see her leave Bibi, who appears to be her younger sister or a close friend. As Mara takes a walk around Pantera, we try to hide behind street posts and bushes until a Pantera soldier relieves us of duty. Be careful, as Mara sometimes turns around to see if she's being followed and may get upset when she feels like there's someone behind her. Arunafeld's espionage is also pretty simple and doesn't take long to complete, so it can be one of your first daily quests at 10 commission tickets. 
All three dailies can be completed twice a day and are best for total beginners. They also give you the following rewards, which are the same rewards offered by most of the daily quests. Base and Job EXP, Zenis, Eden Coins, Star Diamond 1 which can be used to enhance weapons up to level 39, Starlight Silk 1 which can be used to enhance armor up to level 39, and an emblem. Gefenya Ruins gives the Gefen Council emblem, Dexterity Trial gives the Desert Watcher emblem, and the Runefeld's Espionage gives the Rune Knight's emblem. Note that you may also receive limited edition and seasonal rewards from doing daily quests, depending on the seasonal events currently active on your server. For instance, when I recorded footage for this video, we had a bingo event on LNA, so we received bingo number boxes along with the usual rewards from dailies. More importantly, players also get Hearts of Guild from daily quests, which you can submit as contribution to your guild for increasing your guild's level. For daily quests that are tackled in a party such as Anthem Trial and Hazy Forest, which we will discuss later in the video, the party leader may sometimes get a party leader box with some goodies inside for actively leading the party. The fourth and final solo daily quest that requires 10 commission tickets and can be completed up to 2 times a day is item collecting. In this quest, we help Ganhild, a merchant in Alberta, collect so-called rare items for her shop. The game's auto-pathing senses to merchants all over Rune Midgards who offer the items she needs, and we can also make use of the trade window to purchase the others. Once complete, we can return to Ganhild and receive the usual rewards, including an Archie Trading League emblem. Our next segment will discuss the daily quests that require 20 commission tickets and can be completed twice per day. Scenery Along the Road is a soloable daily quest. In this heartwarming mission, we help an old man Gutterm in Payon to revisit the places he cherished the most during his youth. Because of his age, he is unable to do this by himself. Instead, he sends us to take photographs of his favorite spots in Rune Midgards. This daily requires manual control and a little bit of exploration. On our quest panel, we can see the spot Gutterm wants us to go to as well as the map where it is located. We make use of our world map to trigger autopathing to the specified map, and once we arrive, we can go on foot to try and find the spot. Once near it, we take out our camera and align it until the camera icon turns green before taking our shot. We do this for 3 spots and head back to Gutterm for our rewards. All the usual stuff and an Explorer's Association emblem. White Wing Training is a soloable and AFKable simple monster extermination and NPC interaction quest given by Raggy in Alberta. We are given 5 random tasks that can either be Go defeat 20 of this specific monster in this location or Talk to this NPC and listen to his story. Once all 5 tasks are done, we return to Raggy and he gives us all the usual rewards with the Rude Knight's emblem. Finally, we have the Anthem Trial. Khalifa, a messenger from the Hymn Church, tasks us to enter a monster-filled arena to put out Hamia's sinful flame. I've looked everywhere to find out about who this Hamia is, but I couldn't find anything except for Hamia, which is the goddess of fertility in Hawaiian mythology and is also the name of a real-life dwarf planet located beyond Neptune's orbit. If you have any idea who this Hamia is, please let us know in the comments section below. Anyway, in this daily, we are to spin a roulette which tells us the number of monsters that will spawn, as well as their elemental attributes or whether or not they're an elite monster. The aim is to defeat all the monsters without falling in combat, making use of the buffs that sometimes spawn in the arena. We defeat 3 sets of monsters and receive the usual rewards along with the Midgard Holy Emblem. Anthem Trial is best done with a party for the fastest most efficient way of completing this daily with cross-server party matchmaking available around level 40. As mentioned earlier, this can be completed twice per day. Now let's look at the daily quests that require 20 commission tickets and can only be completed once per day. Dance Party is the best daily quest if you totally want to go AFK for the rest of its 15 minute duration. We find a dancer named Iluna standing near the Pantera Fountain who encourages us to dance by the fountain to share love and joy with others. Once accepted, we are sent to a particular spot to dance until the 15 minutes is over. 
inviting your friends to dance with you adds bonuses, and once a number of players dancing together reaches a certain number, you can enjoy a fun firework show atop the Pantera Fountain. Once more commission tickets become available to you at higher levels, you can spend up to 40 commission tickets for a 30-minute version of Dance Party. This daily quest gives all the usual rewards and the Archie Trading League emblem. Nature's Gift is a simple fishing quest from Cleo and Payon. We need to obtain 60 items through fishing, and anything from crabs to fish to bottles containing a mysterious message counts. This daily quest is great if you actively make use of the game's life skills, since many of the sea creatures we fish out of the sea can be used as ingredients for food items that give you buffs, such as the steamed crab nippers, which restores HP and SP and requires 4 rock crabs. For this, we highly recommend using the Auto Fishing Book, which can be bought using diamonds from the RO shop under the Consumables tab. It costs 5 diamonds per book, each of which can be used for 10 minutes. Once the objective is complete, we can return to Cleo, who grants us the usual items and the Explorer's Association emblem. Monster Trial is a slightly more challenging solo daily quest in which we are commissioned by the silent and stern Knight of Marshall to defeat monsters of higher levels than our character. In this quest, we make use of the recommended hunts window that automatically pops up when this daily is accepted to check our options. Since I was level 61 when I recorded this footage, my options were a Skeleton Worker at level 62, Sandman at level 62, Munak at level 63, and Hoad at level 63. I thought of challenging the infamous desert, um, snakes known as Hoad in Southern Sograt. After defeating 50 of these slithering monsters, we returned to the Knight of Marshall to receive the usual rewards and the Midgard Holy Emblem. Tricks of Trade is a tricky business minigame where we help an old merchant in Islud, the only living member of his trade association, show everyone how to build a prosperous business community. I've never been good with numbers, so it took a while for me to understand this quest. But the goal is pretty simple. You start out with 100,000 pouring coins to trade with, and by the end of the 10 minute timer, you'll need to have made 200,000 pouring coins. The key is to start with the merchant closest to where you accept this quest, the one in Islud. Buy several of the lowest priced items, then use the quest map to get to Prentera. Sell the items to the merchant there and buy a few of her lowest priced items, which in turn you can sell to the Islud merchant. Along the way, you can visit bards, one in the Prentera South Gate, the other in Desert Crossroads, who for a few pouring coins can give you business intel. If you choose to avail of this, you can click on your trading bag, the icon with a timer, then click on the question mark to read the intel. It tells you which items are short in supply, which means more demand and a higher selling price. For instance, in my playthrough, the pouring jelly from Pantera can be sold for a higher price to the other merchants outside of Pantera, while the dried obeyun lips from Islud can be sold for a higher price to any merchant outside of Islud. One last thing to note is that mounts, teleportation via Kafra, and butterfly wings are not allowed while this quest is active, so make sure to keep an eye on the timer and plan your visits to the different merchants accordingly. Aside from the usual rewards, Tricks of Trade gives you an Archie Trading League emblem. Advanced Monster Research is perhaps the most challenging out of all the daily quests in Ragnarok Origin. A researcher by the name of Kot from the Royal Monster Research Institute enlists our help to defeat one elite monster, one mini-boss, and one MVP. Forming a party is highly recommended to complete this daily. In order to summon elite and mini monsters, head to Western Morok with your friends and use a dead branch for elite and a bloody branch for mini. With regards to MVPs, you can click on the events icon on your screen, then click on MVP to check which of them have spawned and on which map. The autopathing feature will direct you to the map, but you'll have to manually find the MVP yourself. Once all three tasks are done, return to COD to receive all the usual rewards and a Gefen Council emblem. Finally, we have Hazy Forest. This costs a whopping 40 commission tickets, but trust me, it's worth it. 
Talos, who we meet outside the Pantera Cathedral, introduces himself as the Guardian of the Hazy Forest, which is a place that's very similar to the Pantera Maze north of Pantera, where Baphomet resides in the PC game. He tasks us to venture into this labyrinthian forest to defeat Edgar's shadow. Although we can complete this alone, we highly recommend tackling this with a party using the cross-server queue for fast and easy completion. Inside the forest, Talos lets us spin the roulette and whatever we end up with gets marked on our map. This can be anywhere from the Lost Key to the location of Edgar's shadow. The goal of this daily is to find the Lost Key, find where Edgar's shadow is, reach him and defeat him. Along the way, we pass by areas with monsters that we had to defeat, and even the cute minigame where we have to guide the little pourings back to their dad before the wolf gets them. Aside from the usual rewards, Talos gives us the Rune Knight's emblem. Before we dive into the two daily quests that don't give base and job EXP, let's stop for a moment and talk about which of the quests we've already discussed you should do on a daily basis. We highly recommend Hazy Forest since it gives the highest amount of EXP. From levels 62 to 68, I got about 4 to 7 million base EXP compared to the 1.2 million from other quests such as Dance Party, Anthem Trial, Scenery Along the Road, Tricks of Trade, and even the very challenging Advanced Monster Research. As a party leader, I even got 9 million base EXP from Hazy Forest at level 66. Once you've completed Hazy Forest, with 40 commission tickets left, we suggest doing two runs of Anthem Trial with a party for maximum EXP rewards. So, at level 65 for instance, one run of Hazy Forest plus two runs of Anthem Trial can give you over 6 million base EXP. Now we're left with the last two dailies in the game, Demon Treasure and Catpaw Caravan. Both quests do not require commission tickets, which is why it's easy to incorporate them into your daily routine after you've used up all your tickets. Demon Treasure requires you to find and rescue trapped Deveruchis in either Pantera West Gate or Pantera South Gate. This quest allows auto-pathing, so you can do it completely hands-free. Every day, you are allowed to free 10 Deveruchis, although you can also make use of Deveruchi vouchers for additional rescues, which can be obtained from Battle of Yggdrasil, Anthem Trial, as well as some events and special events. Each Deveruchi freed can potentially give you refinement items such as Illuniums and Oriticons, Zeni Chests, Eden Coins, Vesper Cogwheels for your various core, 3 Carat Diamonds, a Deveruchi Hat Blueprint, as well as other valuable items. Randomly, a Demon Roulette will pop up, which allows you to receive bonus items. This is one of the best stress-free ways to get Eden Coins and Refinement Ores. On the other hand, Catpaw Caravan is a daily which you can only do once per day. We help Captain Jack of the Catpaw Caravan of the Doram race to build their own island of Malangdo. We do this by spending Eden Coins on items that these cute little cats need. It's as easy as clicking on an item, then unload cargo, which brings up the trade window, buying the required items, and loading them onto the boat. We can load up to three boats once a day, and off they go to Malangdo. Catpaw Caravan is the best way to obtain fame or reputation, which is required to level up your medals. However, you do spend quite a bit of Eden Coins, so keep that in mind. These two quests are so fast and easy to complete and also offer great rewards useful in powering up your character, so consider doing them the next time you log in. Aside from the rewards obtained via each daily quest, once you've spent a total of 60 commission tickets per day, you get to spin the roulette found under the rewards tab of the daily quest window. Note that you don't have to spin the roulette every after 60 commission tickets because you can store up to 10 spins. The items that you can get from the roulette include bloody branches, Yggdrasil berries, Vesper cogwheels, pet coupons, and gem fragments. These gem fragments can then be saved up to redeem items such as diamonds, precious card fragments, and advanced card gacha, so make sure to spend at least 60 commission tickets every day, or better yet, use up all your tickets for maximum rewards. So why do we have all sorts of other daily costs available when most people just do Hazy Forest, Anthem Trial, and maybe Dance Party anyway? This is where those emblems come in. Every Sunday at 8pm, Prentera holds a themed party which is a fun event where you can socialize and dance with other players. 
In order to get in, you'll need five different pieces of emblems. This means one of each type of emblem available in the game except one. You can, for example, have one Rune Knight, one Desert Watcher, one Archie, one Midgard Holy, one Geffen Council, and one Explorer's Association emblem, and you'll gain access to the themed party. And because Hazy Forest only gives a Rune Knight emblem, and Anthem Trial only grants you a Midgard Holy emblem, you'll need to do three other daily quests that offer unique emblem rewards if you want to participate in this party. But if you really only want to do Hazy Forest and Anthem Trial, other ways of getting emblems are through emblem boxes, which you can obtain from, coincidentally, our favorites, Hazy Forest and Anthem Trial, and exchanging them with your friends and guildmates. We hope this video gave you all the information you needed to plan out your daily quest routine. Which daily is your favorite? Which one do you hate the most and why is it advanced monster research? If you liked this video, consider liking, subscribing, and hitting the bell notification icon below to be notified every time we upload a video. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one!